laser cut textiles items are really popular in the shops at the moment, um, especially for items uh, for the home, things like table mats and Christmas decorations. And you can see here I've got a, um, a Christmas decoration, a uh, little placemat, um, as well as a, um, a napkin ring, which has actually got a button um, and buttonhole fastening. And the buttonhole itself is actually one of the, um, the laser cut holes. Many of these items are really useful um, and ideal for creating pro projects um, that have got LEDs in them because these little sort of lace um, like holes um, uh, in the fabric are ideal for pushing the LEDs through. Um, also the fabric doesn't fray easily and it's really easy to stitch and manipulate um, and lots of them are really sort of cheap prices. This project shows you how to make a snowflake Christmas decoration. Um, the project uses a light sensor cell holder which automatically turns the LED on in low light levels. You could also replace the light sensor cell holder with just a basic switch cell holder um, as it's applied in pretty much the same sort of way. Um, all you do is leave the hole that you cut in the fabric um, for the sensor, just leave that out. The project uses a laser cut Christmas decoration that's actually a table mat, a little, little uh, sort of cup mat, um, and you can see the, um, the LED poking through um, the hole just here, and down below it is the sensor, the light sensor, um, uh, and on the back you can see the light sensor cell holder, so I've had to cut a hole through the fabric here to allow the light sensor to come through onto the other side. And you can see the LED again going through um, to, to, to the front of the, uh, the decoration. It's a nice easy project to make, so it's good for beginners. Uh, it can also be adapted quite easily for other times of the year. So this is a, um, a snowflake Christmas placemat, but there are a variety of other designs that you can uh, buy for use at different times of the year. So we're going to need the placemat um, uh, that we've got here for this particular project, and we're going to need some backing felt that's going to be big enough um, to cover this sort of central area just here. So I'm using a contrasting uh, white colour. I'm using felt fabric because it, then it won't fray. Um, I'm also going to be using uh, a reel of ordinary sewing thread um, as well as a reel of conductive thread um, which we'll stitch our circuit together with. Um, we're going to use um, a light sensor cell holder um, so the light sensor we can just see here uh, on the back and a cell that will go inside that as well as a, um, an LED. I'm using here uh, a standard 5mm LED uh, in white but you could use any colour. Um, the last thing we're going to need, um, if you want to hang um, the decoration, I'm just going to need some ribbon or something to hang it with. Um, but I could leave the hanger out and just have it as um, something that sits uh, on a mantelpiece um, uh, or something like that. The first stage is to cut out two pieces of the backing fabric that are going to cover um, this sort of section of holes in the centre so that um, when we look at it on the right side, um, we'll be able to see the white contrasting fabric underneath. The next stage is then to mark off um, where the uh, LED and the light sensor are going to go. Um, and they're actually going to come up in these sections here um, for me. So I'm using a specialist marker pen, just put a little dot in the centre there. And this pen disappears within 48 hours, so if I make a mistake on my fabric it won't be there forever. Um, it will disappear over time. Um, you'll need to plan where you're going to put um, your LED and your cell holder. Um, so for example, I know I've got to come within the restrictions of those two spaces there, so I sort of just need to work out where my light sensor is going to come through, where my LED is going to come through, um, and is there space for the two to go together. So um, this project just take a little bit of planning um, as to how your circuit is going to be laid out just cutting um, the two small holes out so um, the, where I've marked them with the pen just gets cut away um, and just check that your LED will fit and that this bottom one here will fit over um, at where the light sensor is on the cell holder. To start off with I'm just going to work with one of these layers of backing fabric so I'll just put that one to one side so I don't lose it um, and I'm going to attach um, to start off with the LED um, uh, to this particular layer. Um, so I've got a pair of round nose pliers um, I'm just going to twist the negative leg, the shorter leg um, um, of the LED um, into a loop 
and just push it to one side. I'm going to just poke that through the hole and I'm going to start to stitch that onto the back just here. The um, negative side of the LED, this leg, is held down using um, tight over sewing stitches. I've done quite a few just here. Um, I'm then going to position the cell holder um, so that the light sensor just here um, goes through the hole so we can see it on the right side. So just sort of position that there. And we're going to take our thread from here, from the leg that we've just finished, over to the um, little connection point um, just over here. I'm just going to do a couple of running stitches, only a small gap, just a couple of running stitches just to get it into position. And then repeat the same process going into the connection point. Um, notice that it's the negative connection point, um, that's a really important point. The two negatives joining up, the negative leg um, on the LED and the negative point on the cell holder. I'm now repeating the process on the other side, so I've twisted the positive leg uh, of my LED and I'm just stitching um, from the positive leg um, across to the positive side on the cell holder and over sewing that in place. Um, so the key thing is to make sure that um, the negative leg on the LED is going to the negative point on the cell holder and the positive um, point on the LED is going to the positive point uh, on the cell holder on the other side. It doesn't really matter which of these connection points you use. Um, so this one, these two are just two spare ones. Um, the, as, as long as you're matching the positive and negatives um, on the cell holder and the LED, um, that's fine. The circuit's now complete. Um, I'm just um, stitching the connection points that we're not going to use in this particular cir circuit. They're just going to act as stabilising points just to prevent it from doing that. Um, so I'm just stitching those with some ordinary thread, just with the over sewn stitches. As you can just see on the right side, um, we've got our stitches that are visible. That's why we're going to need our top layer. So this will go on the top just to hide those stitches. And we've got the um, LED and the, the um, sensor that are just poking through. Before you go any further, just test your circuit actually works by placing the positive side of the cell into the holder and just sliding it into place. Um, there is an on-off switch just here, um, um, so you just need to make sure that is in the on position. Now obviously because it's a light sensor, um, in lots of situations where you're going to be working, this is going to um, stop the LED from coming on. So to test it, you'll need to place the light sensor against a, a, a fabric or go into a dark room. Um, and the sensor can be really quite sensitive, uh, so it can take a while and, and quite a dark um, um, space in order to check that it's working. Before I attach the circuit to the um, uh, the snowflake. I'm just attaching um, the ribbon hanger um, to the top here and again I, just the same as before I'm just using some small over sewing stitches to go around the um, the ribbon. The reason why I'm doing this before I attach the circuit to the to the base um, is because your thread constantly gets caught um, on these little prongs um, and when you have your circuit in the centre it gets caught on there as well so it's just easier to, to, to put your um, hanger in position before you put your circuit um, onto the back. The second uh, piece of backing fabric is slotted over the LED and the sensor just to hide those stitches that are underneath. Um, you can stitch that together just to um, a, a stitch around the edge. Um, I'm going to use a specialist fabric glue um, to hold them together. Um, so I'm just going to go all the way around um, and flatten it out. Um, as I, but as I say, you could just use a, um, a, a, a running stitch around the edge. I've also put a layer of glue um, around the right side of the fabric. I'm just going to slot it into position, just making sure the LED um, and the light sensor are poking through the holes on the right side. Um, just check that your glue, uh, when it dries, doesn't leave um, a, a, a nasty residue. Um, so that's all sort of in position.
the decoration is now complete, an optional extra could be to add a backing um, onto here to cover up the circuit. It really depends what you're going to use the hanging for and uh, whether um, being able to see the circuit um, is going to be an issue. Um, but you could just put a, another piece of felt over the top of here. Um, you would need to um, uh, allow access, some sort of lift up um, a piece here perhaps, to allow you to switch the um, uh, the, the, the cell holder on and to change the battery if needed.